welcome to another episode of Carpool. Um, my guest today is uh, a tech journalist, I think is the, probably the fairest way, but he's a brilliant writer, he's very funny, he has a unique take on the world. I've been reading his work for many, many years, I've been listening to him for quite a few years now on various um, technical podcasts. Uh, he's an amazing guy, very, very unique take on life and the world. Uh, very, very funny, very, very clever just understands technology and how we relate to it in a, in a unique way. I've been looking forward to meeting for ages. Please welcome into the passenger seat, Mr. Andy Anatko. I mean, if you do want to adjust the seat, do, do go ahead. And it's not, I also haven't washed it, so I'm very, so very ashamed. It should be, you know, obviously for limousine purposes, it should be spotless. Well, they, well, they know the Mythbusters, the rougher surface actually gives you better gas mileage. So this is, is more right? eco-friendly oh, than it was is, before. That's, that's why I do it. That's why it's covered, in, covered in Cotswold mud all the time. A nerd will always have a phony baloney <laughs> scientific explanation to justify his behavior for anything. <laughs> now, you'd just come from Barcelona. I've just, I just... And what were you, you would... Doing something really proper and <laughs> very, very, yeah, very tech journalisty. I was at right. the uh, Mobile World Congress. Of course. Yeah. That's on. Uh, that's what. Because like, oh, I've had, that, that is. I feel very sad now that I've just made that connection because I've heard <laughs> lo loads about the Mobile World Conference in Barcelona, and then you've just come from Barcelona. There's a clue. Yeah. And did you see really exciting new phones and? Stuff. I saw some really stupid phones, right? <laughs> which for my purposes is just as good. <laughs> L LG that had two different... <laughs> so they have a new 3D phone so that you can take pictures in 3D and look Not at them in 3D. In a phone. Yeah, and you're looking at them and you're thinking, I'm gonna love this feature for the first 18 minutes that I have this phone and yeah. I'm never ever gonna use it again. Yes. I'm at the stall, I've got it, I'm playing with it, I'm taking a picture, it's like, wow, it looks like I'm really there. They pull down the phone and say, actually, I am really there, Andy. It's not much technology evolved there. But they, they also had the, an Android 3 tablet that was also 3D. This one you needed to have the, those really slimming glasses right. in order to make them work. So not only do I have to carry this tablet, I also have to carry glasses for me and all my friends. So you need a big sack of glasses yeah, everywhere you go. Like, Wow. And so you'll be spreading pink eye throughout the entire continent yeah. because everyone's sharing. Up until 3D, up until everybody obsessed, well, all the manufacturers obsessed with 3D, they were, they, all the technology I saw I was impressed with in one way or another. And I was thinking, right. oh, that is really good. And that, you know, higher definition screens and right. light up phones and longer lasting, you know, all that stuff. I thought, brilliant. That's, you know, you get, you go, wow, that is good. Yep. I want that one. And then, um, are you going to give me my ticket back? Yes, yeah, good. <laughs> but then, uh, 3D, I just went, mm. oh, God. Yeah, you really see the reach there. Yeah. It's just, because you can easily sell somebody on the idea of HD TV. It's a big, yes. it's a, it's a the, the first time that I carried a 46 inch TV from the curb into my living room, just tucked under one arm like a football. Yeah. And I remember the time that I had my dinky little 24 inch, oh, like Sony like, widescreen oh, monitor. Huge, heavy thing. That yeah. I just, I had a, it was like rolling a snowball up a hill. I yeah. had to wrap it in comforters and just roll it up the stairs to get it up there. Yeah. That alone is the idea that, okay, I see why people would want to spend a few yeah. hundred bucks for this. Yeah. But yeah, no one, no one likes 3D. And uh, although I don't know, I mean, do they, I mean, is that the? Do you, is, has it not? Because I don't know whether it's caught on and whether I've just never, missed out on it. But it yeah, I don't know anybody who has one. I don't right. know anybody. I, one of my one of my usual metrics is when I'm like at a family party or something like that, and the friend of the friend or the relative of the friend finds out what I do. Do I get asked about this thing, this technology? Right. Yes, that's a good. And to this day, I'm still asked about the iPad. And do you have right. the iPad with you? What do you think about it? And yeah, I'm thinking right. about getting a. Uh, but no one has ever showed the slightest <laughs> bit of interest in 3D. <laughs> Do you have a 3D tab? No, I've never been asked, never no, heard it mentioned. Exactly. <laughs> or even been told, gosh, you should shoot carpool in 3D. No one's ever said that. They've said lots of other things. <laughs> because 3D was a big fad in the 50s. Yes. And you could buy commercially, like for a consumer, like 3D, like color camera. And You're so, kidding, in the 50s? In the 50s, right. Wow. And it was the coolest thing ever because there was this, uh, the, this uh, it is a flea market at MIT. So right. All those sort of geeky things you can imagine. So someone had a 3D, a 1950s vintage 3D viewer, and someone had an entire set of wedding slides from somebody in 3D. And it's all like the, the, the 50 sort of people in their right. like laminated hair and the right. sort of stiff, like, okay, I'm sure that the Pope says this is an okay thing for me to do, so I'm gonna do it now. And you just wonder what, how it would be different 
20, 30 years from now to have that extra capture data, yeah. for lack of a better word. But these were, sorry, this, so this was a still camera. This was taking it, was a, it, was, it was a slide camera. Right. We take two slides side by side, right. distance from, from your eyes. The camera, it looks like a set of eyes because it has to, the lenses have to, had to be yeah, exactly that, the right, that, the, that the right side of the way. Yeah. Most, most of the United States' death ray output is coming out of the MIT campus, usually not as part of a contract, just as sort of a hobby. <laughs> You know, when they can't get fringe on the, on the cable and... Oh, fringe. I loved fringe. <laughs> I have a mental list of all these shows that my friends say, Oh my god, you gotta try this out. You've gotta watch fringe. Okay, it's gonna sound silly when I explain it to you, but wait to see the pilot. <laughs> and I can sense that this is a smart person whose opinion I really trust. And if I take of his advice, I might have to block out an hour a week for the rest of my life. Yeah. When I start getting into the shield, like by episode three, I'm like, oh, damn it. Now I'm gonna have to... Find something. I'm gonna have to find something to do for nothing for Thursday nights every yeah. night. Damn it. But I mean, fringe, well, it's Fringe and Flash Forward were these okay. two series that both I think can fairly early on in their lives. That yeah. I actually sat with my teenage son and we chose to, you know, and that hasn't had beers and he wanted to watch them and he would come and get me and after said, <laughs> Dad, it's Fringe, quick! And I'd actually run, stop everything. That's awesome. <laughs> I was thinking last night because I was all anxious because I thought, God, I don't know anything because you're, you're very knowledgeable. But my first Apple was an S SE 220, right. the little black and white screen. It still works, yeah. it's still got it, it still works. So I don't even know how old it is, 20, 23, 24 years old. That, is a, it was but that old. isn't, that is, that is actually quite a late model in the full history of... That was, the, first there was the Apple, the, first of all, the people who had the ultimate screen thread are the ones who claimed that they had an Apple One computer. Yes. And the, apparently Waz and Jobs built about 400,000 of these, because there are 400,000 people who said, oh, that's, I remember, I, I believe it was Steve Jobs who took my phone call and took the order personally. <laughs> Oddly enough, no evidence of that anywhere from anyone. Um, then there was the Apple II, which is the one that actually like they got the, they, they made their bones off of. Then to the Apple IIe, that became the most popular computer ever. Right. And then, <laughs> and then they, they Apple tried to shove baby into a corner. They tried to say, Steve, right. we're going to give you this failed project that is going to basically put you in your place and show you that you have nothing to do with anything anymore. Right. And he said, okay, tell you what, I'm going to turn I'm going to turn this into the Macintosh project. And right. then you're going to be really, really upset because it's going to be a big, big success. And then you have to say it was all my fault because I'm the one who had this idea or right. all these people together. But yeah, right. no, it's, I mean, it is something I've been thinking about and writing about recently because I'm not that different in age from him. I don't know what he's mid. He's mid fifties, maybe something like that. And I'm extremely close. And there, and I think the first, uh, you know, our early teenage years were alarmingly similar. You know, going through a very similar phase of things, but there was something happened when he he, he saw a rank Xerox interface system and went, "Oh, that's clever." I would have gone, "Oh, I don't know what that is. Well, what else would you do with it? I don't want to photocopy it. You know, I've got nothing to photocopy." You know? The luckiest people on earth are the people who find a really positive obsession when they're little kids. Yeah. When society says, yes, by all means, lock yourself in the house after school every single day, yeah. every single weekend, and focus on the, on the mandolin or focus on these, this computer or yeah. focus on whatever it is that you just can't not do anymore. Yes. yes. Because, I mean, I, I definitely, I mean, I I think that the thing we have in common is writing, that that, was, that has always been my oh, yeah, background activity, and I've always done it. And even when I was the most despicable, dirty, long-haired, hippie bum living in a tent in the Welsh hills, I was still writing. You know, I always had a book that I was writing in. And what were you thinking as you were writing in your dirty tent in the Welsh hills? No, I, well, how cold Someday it is. Someday they'll understand yes. this. It's really cold and damp. <laughs> and I'm not happy. <laughs> I've just had an insight. Actions have consequences, yeah. don't they? <laughs> and now I'm living in a ditch. Yes, that is, that is exactly what I was writing and thinking. Yeah. <laughs> I was kind of, I was kind of wondering about that because I'm probably the first generation that learned to write on a word processor. Yes. I was. I, yeah. my, uh, my dad had his college typewriter, and I, I played with it. And the first short stories I wrote were on that. Yeah. But. Magic Window was the first tool that I used to write creatively, and so it was still early enough in education where your assignment was, now first you're going to write your first draft, and then you hand in the first draft, right. and then you give the notes, and then you hand in your second, it was like you're developing a pilot project for NBC, because they didn't want to see the finished thing, they didn't want to see all the steps you're doing, right. and I had to explain to my teachers that this 
the first draft doesn't exist because when I came up with the first paragraph that didn't work, I simply deleted it and yeah. wrote a new one. Yes. And so I, sometimes I wonder if that means that I mean, every, every really good creative writing guy that you read says that's forget about the first draft, just get from start to finish, and then, and then you start, start, start polishing yeah. that. And it gives you sort of an itchiness to say, no, I really don't like that paragraph, so I'm, I'm going to stop right here and fix that. Yeah. I mean, when I tried to pick up doing fiction again uh, a few years ago, I found that I just absolutely couldn't do it in the word process, or I had to go back to a notebook because oh, really? there's, wow. only, there's only a forward gear when you're writing longhand. Yes. And I'm slowly being able to write fiction again, like on the word processor, yeah. because now I, I just had a I had a beat in it in my head that no, you're just you never get you never got to the twenty thousandth word on the word processor before, but you get there when you just go to Starbucks. Yeah. I, I'm, that was a lie. I never go to Starbucks. I always go to the, there's a bagel place with Wi-Fi that I go to. But. <laughs> Only because immediately I thought that, oh, God, I don't want to be known as the person yeah. who writes at a Starbucks. I've written, there, was, there was a donut shop also near my house that was open until midnight and had free soda refills. Right. And they were very understanding of someone who showed up at 9.30, paid $2 for a parking pass, so to speak, yeah. and then stayed there for two or three hours. But, yeah, it's... No, we'd both get Twitter comments if you said, I go to Starbucks. They'd go, don't you know what Starbucks do? Haven't you heard? Yes, they make a frothy cinnamon cappuccino. And... <laughs> If you come in before before December 18th, you can get 20% off. Just mention Bobby Lou in the Carpool Podcast. You'll be glad you did. We'll be back up. That's when Starbucks got their first installation there. And then, you know, all the big box stores came in. What happened to Main Street USA yeah. disappeared. You can't even find it in the UK anymore. You know, I've learned, really, in the last year, that this is where people think, you can switch it off. Yeah. And that's what I have now. I have to, I have, you know, I only have a word processor open. And then my fingers are automatically going to flip between programs, but there's that's nothing there, like carry on. <laughs> that's the reason why my iPad has been one of my, it's really become one of my primary and preferred right. writing tools because yeah. it's difficult to switch to a different task yes. on it, especially with iOS 4.2. You can run, you can, I can have the Twitter app in the background, but actually getting to it requires me to take the cans off the keyboard and right. do some, do do some something. of this in order to get it done. So you're using an, iP an iPad with a, an external right. keyboard? with a Bluetooth keyboard. Right. And, yeah, I mean, I don't even take my MacBook on trips if I can possibly get away with it anymore. Right. Because I just feel like the man of the future when I board yeah. that plane with not even the big laptop bag, but the little sleeve yeah. that has my toothbrush, change of unmentionables, <laughs> and my iPad. Yes. Not even the charger, because, hey, I got 10 hours of battery. Yeah. I'm not going to work that hard this weekend. Uh, you know, I bought my wife one because I thought I wouldn't use it until I don't want to get one for me yet. Right. I'm not sure if I'm ready. And, uh... And I have brought my wife many presents, and very, very <laughs> few of them have been, you know, I mean, quite a lot of them have just disappeared because they've been discreetly taken back. They're right. just utterly wrong. The jumper. Uh, it was a very bad jumper. <laughs> it did not even get the pity where it was so you could see that I'm wearing it. I don't believe it ever went near, nearer her, her physical form than her fingertips. Honey, if you're going out, can you take this yes, back with you? you? There you go. This? Oh, but and the, we need walnuts. But the uh, but it was a pair of pearl earrings and an iPad have been phenomenally... And the iPad really above and beyond anything. And this yeah. is a woman who is as interested in computers as I am in... You know, collecting not computers. Yes, not anything. I mean, not, not... But she just uses it all the time. She finds it much easier than a laptop. It does everything she needs to do. Yeah. I and mean, it has been an extraordinary breakthrough. And she will actually kind of do stuff on it. My, she's never done anything on a, on, a, on a computer except say to me, my email isn't working, this is rubbish. <laughs> and it's my fault, basically, because I forced her to have it. You know, stuff. I, mean, I, I like it so much that I've been I mean, we're making plans to, for the first time in like three years, tear out my entire like home office network infrastructure to make it really work and really sing well with VPN so that I can... I take an old Mac that I have and just use it sort of as an application server for an iPad. Wow. So that no matter where I, it doesn't, the, the only times that it doesn't work for me are when I really do specifically need to run a word processor called Scrivener. Right. Or I do specifically need to run this desktop Mac app. Right. But obviously it's not available on the iPad. Yeah. But you can use VPN, you can just use it as a terminal toward that and pointed towards uh, a computer you got back in the house or back in the office. Right. And so, so long as I've got Scrivener on that Mac, I can essentially run Scrivener on the iPad. Wow. But now I'll have to spend about $300, $400 and have my network go down for about 36 hours while right. I, if I were competent, it would be about three to, three to six minutes, but I factor in the, yeah. okay, <laughs> I guess it doesn't go that way. 
<laughs> reality one and Otco zero. Oh no, it's in reality 4,712 and Otco negative eight. <laughs> You know, I mean, it says I'm an amateur nerd on Twitter. That's because it's really true. I mean, I can do some stuff, but boy, does it go wrong quickly, and do I have to ring friends up fast who know how to yeah. do things properly? Yeah. Um, but I mean, that's what's very reassuring is when sometimes when you, you know, not I mean, all of you go through it on that show, go through some new thing, and I'm listening, going, God, I don't think I could do that, and I go, well, actually, no, I sort of, and then you go, and it went wrong, and it did yeah. this, and you go, that's such a relief. <laughs> and sometimes it's the positive sort of things going wrong where, okay, I really thought it would work. I guess I'm going to learn something now. Excellent. This yeah. is great. I'm learning <laughs> so much wonderful stuff here on a day when I have a critical book deadline. Yeah. yeah. I guess that'll make it that much more memorable, the fact that I'm going to blow a deadline because 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 something so simple that an 11-year-old cousin told me yes. it's only how to set this up and I can't. Hey, uh, cows. Yes. Oh, there's some horses. Well, they're cow-shaped horses. Oh, they're... <laughs> oh my God, they're horses masquerading as cows. There's like a white front and a white back and a black... Do you have those in the UK? We, we don't have those back home. Uh, they're called courses. They're oh, sort of okay. a cross. Well, they're, they're, they're two people who are at the danger poles of any technical problem. The ones who don't know anything and don't know how, don't have the first clue how to solve the problem. Yeah. And the people who know way, way yeah. too much. Uh, uh, there was a time when uh, I and like three other people we're doing, the, like, we're recording a, a series of like instructional DVDs or whatever, and we couldn't get the inter the interconnect internet connection just stopped in the office, right. and it was like the Iron Chefs attacking the problem because Iron Chef of networking figured that it was a D it was a DNS problem and there must be a way I could rewindow it that will make this work, yeah. and Iron Chef of, of client servers client software said that I think that there are two people who are trying to to tell in the same address and that's what's the problem. I'm like. I'm usually like the application end, like the layer eight end person who's saying, I bet there's a patch that hasn't been updated to this, I'll check for new patches. And then we still couldn't get it to work, and then finally, it, it, I have to get so frustrated before, I, in a condescending, dripping with sarcasm way, and this is my internal monologue, no, no, I bet it's just that, the, I bet the cable isn't plugged in, huh? I have to show you, Mr. Server, that the, oh, the cable isn't really plugged in. Oh, is that what, and what, what it was was like the little, the little locking clip like yeah. broken off, so it like was jiggling, it wasn't right. out, it was just a little bit loose, yeah. and so I just took like the plastic, you know, the, the plastic uh, toothpick from my Swiss Army knife and jammed it in there, and right. suddenly from four corners of the office, <laughs> four people say, I fixed it! <laughs> I knew it was a windowing problem. You see, uh, it was dropping frames. I could see that it wanted to connect. <laughs> to say, yeah, but of all the computers in your house, which is the one computer that always functions? Oh, right. that's right, it's the iPad. Yeah, that's yeah. the one that I've never had to have that conversation, that one-way conversation, saying, you know what, the computers yesterday when I was just messing around, you gave me all the internet I wanted and more. Yeah. But now when I just want to send an 8K text file, that's yeah. why you decided, no, I don't get it to now. It's 1988. The internet doesn't exist. I'm not going to email anything. Yeah. And so I wound up going through the iPad and, oh, yeah, the one that I don't have the power to improve yes. is the one that always works. Yes. It's like it's like religious arguments. I really, no, it really yeah. is a religious argument. There, there, there are people who can debate it on the point of view of here's why it's important on in many situations to make sure that you're using an open software model. Uh, yes. For instance, oh, I can understand those. Every, 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 yeah. every two years and every four years, there's a really good new debate about here's why digital voting systems have to be based completely on open source yeah. with no patents whatsoever. Every scrap of source code that's going into these machines has to be a matter of public record so yeah. that, because I mean, the, the weird thing is making secure systems open actually makes them more secure. Right. The, I mean, the whole reason why the DVD encryption failed is because they did not vet it in front of the crypto community. Right. So the crypto community would have leapt all over them saying, okay, as soon as you release this, here's what I'm going to do to unlock yeah. every single DVD. Right. And they have, haven't they? I mean, has there, has there been any successful it's, DVD it, locking? There is absolutely uh, nothing. They, they, they've pretty much given up on it. Now they've right. pretty much extended that to uh, Blu-ray, obviously, right. it's a different system, but th you, you can't build a set of keys because someone's going to build a better set of lockpicks, or yeah. in many cases, yeah. a better hammer. But um, but, but it, some people really elevate open source to a religious thing, where yeah. just on principle, the fact that there are this technology or this product is in any way controlled by a software patent means that it is evil. It is not simply something I personally don't like or something that yeah. is unsuitable for public use. I simply think that it is part of what the quote, what is wrong with America, yeah. unquote, or the world. And I mean, and just just like the God debate, you get 
you think that maybe you're kind of subtly in for an interesting argument, but it always gets into semantics about even amongst the it, you always wind, it wind up with the People's Front of Judea fighting with the yes. Indian People's Front because <laughs> no way you don't support the GNU ISIS no no way you don't you're not, they're not you don't think you're free software let me tell you about free yeah. software yeah. man like oh for heaven's sake what if we lock you two in a room with a limited supply of food <laughs> and you work it out but what I think is remarkable and I was talking about this to a, a sort of uh, you know, experienced TV producer who's done lots of shows with which have guests is that I've done a hundred episodes of Carpool now I think you're probably about the I think you've, you've got to be close to the hundredth cool. and you'd think that some, out of a hundred you, you grab any hundred people from any walk of life one of them is going to be a bit <laughs> either moody or you know or something and they've all been amazing you'd think you'd think by now I'd have had someone who went Oh, shut up, Lord, and you toss her and got out. See, now you're making me regret, like, not, yeah. not having the wit to think. Yes. Like, I'll be the one who's sitting going, not talking. <laughs> no, no, you're better, like, the, now, now, we get into the car and we'll start from there. Okay, okay, this is going to be fun, fun. It's like, so, welcome to the car. Yeah, I'm just fucking, just got a phone call. My dog's dying in yeah. cancer. <laughs> That would be bad. Kind of looks like that. Yeah. Oh god, he'll never run <laughs> again. That's, that's the thing. He'll live, but he'll never run again. He's got no back legs. He'll be giving wheels. 